college basketball on NBC Sports. Today, Digger Phelps and the 20 and 7 Fighting Irish of Notre Dame go up against Joe Meyer and the DePaul Blue Demons. DePaul at 19 and 11. Horizon College Basketball is brought to you by Pontiac. We build excitement. By new Piccolo Dry, one taste, and you'll drink it dry. By Craftsman, people who depend on tools depend on Craftsman. And by State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A capacity crowd, better than 17,000 on hand for DePaul's home finale at the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. This is a long-time rivalry that dates back to 1911, and it may well be an NCAA bid on the line for DePaul. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert, hello, and Bucky Waters, the one-time coach at Duke and West Virginia. And DePaul coach Joey Meyer is concerned, what with this being an emotional situation, the home finale for his ball club, that his club may be too sky high, a bit on the over anxious side. Do you buy that? Well, it can work both ways, Mark. Last week at UCLA, we saw Boo Richardson have the game of his life. And of course, for Green and Brundy, this is their big day. And these two guys have been tough for four years. Statistics really don't measure them. They've been with Joey Meyer right from the beginning. They've heard him boot in his place. They've also been to an NCAA tournament every year. They are good basketball players, but they're great athletes. And if the ball can run today in the horizon, and we're in for a treat. They've had a good run at DePaul, but they must be an up-tempo to be effective. Well, Notre Dame has surprised people a record of 20 and 7. They appear to be headed to the NCAA. They will be without their leading scorer and starting guard, Joe Frederick. He's back in South Bend because of a sprained ankle. However, freshman standout, Lafonso Ellis, makes his return after missing two games because of a dislocated finger. Well, he's a freshman, but there isn't a senior on that team so he's had to do it right from the beginning and he's been precocious he has led him digger keeps complaining he's too sweet and he does have a magic johnson quality about him but his 49 rejects indicate when you get in the paint and get around the glass he's a big time rejector and rebounder he's got to play big today the athletes up front for DePaul can be awesome Notre Dame can run, but I don't think as well as the ball in this building. It will be the Irish and the Blue Demons. This crowd will be rocking throughout. We'll be back with the lineups right after these messages. From now on, this is what dry is. Dry is a beer that starts bold from the first taste, finishes clean with no aftertaste, and refreshes completely. Dry is a beer called Michelob Dry. One taste, and you'll drink it dry. see it in the way it looks. You can feel it in the way it drives. This is America's premier sports coupe, Grand Prix. Get and now is a great time to check out Grand Prix with GMAC financing as low as 4.9% or up to $1,600 cash back on select Grand Prix for qualified first-time buyers. See your dealer for details today. According to a national survey, employers are looking for people who can handle heavy responsibilities. People with the ability to overcome obstacles, perform under pressure, and work well with others. Men and women with the pride and self-discipline it takes to reach new heights. Which is why some of the most successful people in the white-collar world start off green. goes nowhere without craftsman tools. From their durable precision power tools to hand tools that are guaranteed forever. So, make sure it's a craftsman because you don't want to get stuck with anything else. For field goal percentage, 
third in career. It is senior day here at the Rosemont Horizon for DePaul University. And a memorable day for co-captain Stanley Brundy and Terrence Green. And here is Stanley Brundy, accompanied by his Aunt Rose Jemison, who raised him in Los Angeles, California, and will watch him play in college for the first time today. And just a moment ago, Terrence Green, one of nine children, accompanied by his parents, his father will watch him play for the first time since Terrence was in high school as dad, John, wheelchair assisted ever since he suffered a stroke some four years ago. And Terrence had to pull together 95 tickets for family and friends to make it here from Flint, Michigan. So some nice moments uh, prior to the start. Uh, this the second meeting of the season between Notre Dame and DePaul. 79th meeting overall. Notre Dame leads 45 to 33, but DePaul has won 10 out of the last 15. And Notre Dame won in South Bend earlier uh, this season, just a couple of weeks back. LaFonso Ellis, Jabair Jackson, Keith Robinson up front. Elmer Bennett, 6'1", freshman from Houston, replacing the injured Joe Frederick, who had been on a tear as of late. And the point guard is sophomore Tim Singleton, a very young club that has done extremely well. They come off a win over Marquette Wednesday night. They've won their last two on the road, winning at Marquette and at Butler. And for Joey Meyer and DePaul, Stanley Brundy and Curtis Price up front, the center is 7'1", junior James Hamby. And in the backcourt, Chucky Murphy, a freshman from Westchester, Illinois, along with the senior from Flint, Michigan, Terrence Green. In that earlier meeting, DePaul shot only 43% against the Irish. Joey Meyer felt they gave up too many easy buckets and had a weak rebounding first half. But a major factor here today, the absence of Joe Frederick, who sprained his ankle in practice yesterday. He is one of the uh, Notre Dame leaders. Strong move by Brundy to draw the foul. Well, you hate to play off the storyline, but right away, Brundy went for the hole, and he really didn't have control of that basketball. It was an excellent entry pass, and he just sort of went to the glass, and the ball just kind of floated out of his hand. It, it really can be a two-edged sword when you get that jacked up. What a player he is, quick to the rim. Only four foot range. There we go again. That was, that was definitely an adrenaline shot. He is only a 48% free throw shooter. And DePaul, a very bad free throw shooting team at 63%. Digger Phelps has been complaining about uh, Notre Dame. They're at 68. They're on fire compared to the Blue Demons. Digger's teams usually do two things well, rebound and shoot free throws. And this young team, no seniors, has not done as well as his teams in the past at the free throw line, but they can still pull. Here's Ellis, way off, rebounded by Price. Green on the penetration. And back come the Irish. Elmer Bennett. Bennett had some difficulty at the start of the season, but he has come on and at times off the bench has provided instant offense. Notre Dame with a 2-0 lead. Amby down low. Amby off the fake. And the rebound by Keith Robinson. This is Singleton handling. Alfonso Ellis. And the ball is on it. Chucky Murphy. Wendy trying to throw it off the uh, the lead pass. Murphy. Both teams very tight, very tight. The pressure's all on DePaul. It's assumed that the Irish have their NCAA bid. DePaul's still on the bubble. They'll tell you that they're confident, but this is what I say. Here's Green. Rebounded by Hamby, he gets it back out. Murphy off the fake. And Ellis able to cut on the rebound. 
Bambi, an interesting starter. He's starting on the basis of his last outing, which was 11, uh, 11 points and seven boards against Marquette. And uh, with this four center rotation that Joey Meyer uses, he feels he has 20 fouls, and he goes with the guy that's done the best lately. Today, it's Hamby. Ellis with a nice fake and called for the charge. Offensive foul. The officials today out of the Missouri Valley Conference, Dan Christman, Rich Eichhorst, Dan Taylor. You saw Bigger Phelps react. He's been a bit more on the low-key side, though, this season. Indeed. Lafonso Ellis, who's missed two jumpers, decides to take it down inside. Excellent position defense that time by DePaul. There's the mellow digger. He's got a young, talented team, and he really has laid back and let them make a few mistakes this year. Ellis committing that foul his second. Three, strip, and it will be the Paul ball. I asked Digger why is he more laid back this season. He said, well, first of all, he does not prowl the sidelines the way he did because in the past because of a bad back, but he said this is the best young talent he has ever had at South Bend, so uh, he is pulling back. Here's Brundy. Blowing glass. The game is tied at two. We're three minutes in. The ball is not a good half-court team. Notre Dame isn't great at it, but they're better. Here's Green off the steal. Notre Dame getting back. Green is stopped. Forced the issue. Recovered, though, by Murphy. Murphy's an interesting story, Mark. It was a walk-on, just a freshman from Westchester, Illinois. He's actually the slowest, smallest, weakest guy on the squad, but he's the only guy out there with a point guard mentality. He will take care of the ball. And rebounded by Keith Tower, who replaced LaFonso Ellis. Singleton with a nice speed. Elmer Bennett with a second field goal, and Notre Dame with a four. To Lee. The Irish at 20 and 7. They have won 8 of the last 11. They have been shooting well recently. 51% for the season. A strong rebounding team among the top in the nation. That wall, uh, though, as mentioned earlier, in the foul shooting department, and it has hurt down the stretch. Al Murphy regrouping. This is Green. Meeting Brundy. And that's a goal, 10. Basket counts. And the game is tied at four. As you watch Terrence Green, remember the point I made. He is not a great basketball player. He's a great athlete. A heck of a football player. He goes for the iron. Timeout taken with four minutes gone by in this first half. Drive the excitement of Pontiac Grand Prix and get a mega value. Get $1,000 cash back direct from Pontiac. Or GMAC financing as low as 4.9%. And if you're a qualified first-time buyer, another $600 cash back. That's up to $1,600 cash back or 4.9% GMAC financing. See your local Pontiac dealer for details. In the village of Upper Nyack, the firemen fight fires with ladders and hoses. And a Murata fax machine. It's used to receive floor plans and detailed drawings of buildings so they can plan how to attack the fire before they get to the fire. Murata fax machines. I'm State Farm Agent Richard Clay. I take care of the Barber family's insurance, their car, their home, and life insurance, too. Jill and Sherman like the way State Farm handles all the details on their auto and home coverage. And when it comes to life insurance, they like the way I listen to help them make sure that as their family grows, so does their State Farm protection. And like a good neighbor, State Farm here that the true metal of a man is tested for a few days in March the players championship on NBC Sports 
Welcome back to the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago as we sweep around the scoreboard. Well, Indiana's clinched the Big Ten, but uh, having all kinds of problems this afternoon with Iowa in the uh, second half. Florida over Tennessee in the SEC semifinal. Tennessee with the home court advantage at the SEC. And here at the Rosemont, Notre Dame in possession and the ball tied at four with four minutes gone by as Jameer Jackson handles. This is Tim Singleton, a sophomore from New Orleans. Taken over the point guard position from a fellow by the name of David Rivers, and he's done a solid job. His dribble penetration really hurt the ball at the game at South Bend. He just uh, took the ball down inside, broke down the Blue Demon defense at will, and then fed the two postmen who had a field day. Robinson did not hit, though. Rebounded by Curtis Price. Well, Maryland, after pulling off the upset yesterday, trounced by North Carolina 38-14 at halftime. Big East semifinal, Syracuse by one over Seton Hall, Memphis State, Louisville tied in the Metro Conference uh, semi. Iowa State leading Oklahoma coming off the scare last night. And with Mookie back, though, not to worry. Grundy. So Brundy with his third field goal, and DePaul leads by the score of 6-4. Brundy is so quick to the rim. He only has four-foot range, but he absolutely explodes around the basket. 19 points and 10 rebounds. Just don't tell the story on this guy. Terrific putback man. He had 10 offensive rebounds for basket against Marquette the last time out. Bennett hit from behind by Murphy following the rejection by the seven foot one Hamby. Well, that was a, an interesting double team. Seven foot one Hamby in front and a very small six foot Murphy from behind. Murphy got called for the foul. He saw one chance to try to get a block. Good pursuit that time. <laughs> the little guy says, while you're trying to look over that human eclipse, I think I'll sneak up and steal this one. <laughs> Batted only a 61% free throw shooter. Five and a half minutes gone by. Both teams appear to be tight here at the start. The feeling is Bigger Phelps of Notre Dame will be headed to the NCAA with the ball. It's a question mark or a summer field that even if they don't win today, they will make it. Record of 19 and 11, but it has to be kept in mind that when the uh, NCAA committee of nine gets together. They uh, subtract games against Division II, Division III teams, and in that uh, the Paul victory column is a win over Chaminade, so you can erase that one. Three getting in, and the ball up by the score of eight to five. Both the Paul and Notre Dame, though, have played very difficult schedules. The Paul has faced seven in the top 20, but they've won only one of those against North Carolina State. They had what they thought was a big win over St. John's here. I mean, a, a loss to St. John's here, which has become markedly worse when St. John's, well, the wheel just came off for the Red Men at the end of the year. Long range by Bennett. Three That's a three-pointer for Elmer Bennett. A now the very, game is tied at eight. A very poised Irish team. Again, we make the point, no seniors. And uh, Joe Frederick, really their most experienced player, out with a sprained ankle. And they have shown a lot of poise in here. Singleton committing the foul. Bennett has all eight Notre Dame points. Good double team down the court. You know, most teams pressing the ball in the horizon. That's kind of like yanking on Superman's cape. But the Irish are also confident of their quickness and transition game. And they're really challenging the Blue Demons. And you don't often see that in this building. Melvon Foster and David Booth now have entered the ball lineup. So it's Murphy and Foster in the backcourt. Booth, Hamby, and Brundy up front. Booth had a career high, 23 against uh, Notre Dame. At South Bend, Booth off the mark. Brundy on the rebound. They think Booth's going to be the next high-scoring player for DePaul. Tremendous freshman talent. Excellent start for the senior Brundy. He's home for four, eight points, and beyond the rebound. Here's Brundy. Yes, and it counts. 
action works both ways. Notre Dame, which has been quick to the ball, the offensive end gets caught napping. The fly pattern, a oh, heck of a pass from Chucky Murphy. Look at Bundy gather that one in. I told you Terrence Green was the football player, a parade high school All-American, but Bundy very tough over the shoulder catch. Foul committed by Singleton. Damon Sweet, six foot five freshman from Beaumont, Texas, has checked in for the first time for the Irish. Now, Bundy now 0 for 3 from the line. He's 5 for 5 from the floor. Here is Sweet. Damon Sweet off the bench to connect on his first attempt. It's a 12 10 lead for DePaul. Irish not really organized on that press. They have one or two pressing, and the others are dropping back. They need to get some signals where I think the press will bother with the Blue Demons. It has so far. Happy on Robinson. And James Happy, a 63% shooter who has played well recently, able to hit on his first field goal and the ball with a 14 chance. Certainly no poetry in motion. It seems to take him forever to get that release. They may want to run him. And a hurry. Nice move by Damon Sweet. He's come off the bench to hit two out of two. 14 12 to score. Two ball by two. The Blue Demons at 19 and 11. They have won nine of their last 11. The losses in that stretch, as you mentioned, Buck, uh, at the hands of the Redmond of St. John. That's a blocking foul. And uh, the other loss suffered against Notre Dame. Andy called on that foul, his first. Joey Myers just did escape Fordham in New York, but through the course of the season, good teams make those escapes. 11.53 remaining first half. Timeout is called. You hear the thunder, thunder. You can see it in the way it looks. You can feel it in the way it drives. This is America's premier sports coupe, Grand Prix. Get on your pony, you can ride on and now is a great time to check out Grand Prix with GMAC financing as low as 4.9% or up to $1,600 cash back on select Grand Prix for qualified first-time buyers. See your dealer for details today. There's a motor oil that talks about quality, always has, always will. Well, Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any automobile manufacturer. Oh yeah, unlike the competition, Valvoline also makes the motor oil used by 7 out of 10 Indy 500 crew chiefs. That's 7 out of 10 crew chiefs every year for the last 10 years. People who know, use Valvoline. It started with a death. Do you believe in God? Yes. It's going to end with a bang. Is there anyone that would be afraid to go through a door with me? When a murder becomes a war. White supremacy. A cop needs an army. But I'd go through a door with you anytime. Don Johnson. Dead bang. Rated R. Starts Friday, March 24th at a theater near you. Sunday, from the hotbed of the game, it's the ACC Championship. College basketball, it's the stuff weekends are made of on NBC Sports. Joey Meyer, in his fifth year, has won 70% of his games here. And he had a rough start. He was booed in this building. In fact, there was a time at introductions they did not mention the coach because he was booed. Now in his fifth year, he's his own man, a very confident guy, former player and captain for his dad, Ray. Ray, of course, still doing color on the radio. In fact, the first Ray Meyer color cast ever was with our colleague Dick Enberg when a snowstorm hit Chicago. He did the Loyola UCLA game when the regular color man couldn't get there. See, there's always a career after coaching, even for the coach, the big guy. Joey Meyer did a great deal to make the end of Ray Meyer's career a success. There were some real low points in there for a long time. He's earned this shot. Shot clock is down to 12 for Notre Dame. It's down to seven. Here's Jackson. And DePaul in possession. Nice lead and Green on a look away. Basketball count. Foul before the uh, shot attempt. Blocking foul. 
Digger's livid. This is the difference between Chucky Murphy and Melvon Foster. Murphy would have stopped. Foster gives the look away and ran right over the Irish player. Melvon Foster, one tough cookie. Elmer Bennett on that foul. Well, Iowa has defeated Indiana by 17, 87 to 70. 16 fouls now called on Notre Dame. Green, Brundy, Booth. Foster, Green is posting. Booth played very tight. The Paul offense gets closer and closer to the basket as they maneuver, and they leave themselves vulnerable for fast breaks because anybody goes for this club at any time. They don't always have good defensive balance. Green able to beat Jackson. And Paul has a four-point lead, 16-12. Stephen Howard has come on for the first time. For DePaul, Scott Paddock, 6'9", junior now in the lineup. For Notre Dame, wearing number 43. Demons now with a 1-2-2. Two, two. Just giving the young Irish another look. It looked like they were really getting dug in against that man for man. Well, Bennett making it look very easy as he was able to slide by, and he has hit four out of five. He has ten points. Ten of the Notre Dame, 14 points. The ball leads by two with ten minutes left. In this first half, Bob Albert, Bucky Waters, the more capacity crowd of the Rosemark Horizon in Chicago. Booth post glass. Rebound three. And the ball leads on 18 14. Terrence Green shows that football mentality and aggressiveness around the basket. Not always smooth, but pit bull when he gets in the paint. And he did turn down a football scholarship at Michigan State. Robinson is hit on the reach in by Green for Green is first foul. This is Green's 123rd straight game for the Blue Demons. He was Rod Strickland's roommate. That ought to qualify him for some kind of endurance. Rod Strickland getting a start once again tonight for the New York Knicks but with Mark Jackson injured. Is going out early, uh, put a little wrinkle in the Blue Demons' plans, and that's one of the reasons a walk-on like Chucky Murphy has emerged as very important for Joey Myers' club. Strickland having a great pro career. Ooh, Bennett is so quick. Two quick Texans out of uh, for the Irish this year. Bennett and Sweet. This is Sweet with it. Crowd applauding. Solid defensive effort by the ball. Robinson fielding the air ball, and it is called a tie-up. And the uh, possession arrow is pointing in the direction of Notre Dame. If that 1-2-2 two, two can contain the dribble penetration of Bennett, it appears the zone is bothering the Irish a little bit. And one thing about it, the ball can run from that defense because all the people are in the right lane. Elmer Bennett, oh. another three-point field goal. That is his second of the game, and DePaul leads by one. 13 points for Bennett. He is the high man. Getting the playing time over the absence of the leading scorer for Notre Dame, Joe Frederick, who's hitting at a 16 point per game pace. Stephen Howard, who has been in the throes of a shooting slump in recent games, hitting on his first field goal attempt. Boy, when he's going good, though, Howard is something. A good jump shooter from the top of the key. Excellent passer down underneath. That's a turnover even young teams aren't supposed to make, says the digger, but he's mellowed. Yes, yes, he has. <laughs> Maybe saving himself for the tournament. The ball showing some patience against pretty good man for man. Lundy getting in. That high-low dump down I just talked about. There aren't many centers like Stephen Howard that can draw you out to play him honest. And that's a tough feed when the big guy is passing down your throat on the block. There's no weak side help when you're feeding from the top. Sweet. Rebound Paddock. Basket counts and the foul. Scott Paddock with the bucket. And he will go to the line. 
This used to be what we always thought of inside. Well, here's the offensive play at the end. Ooh, might have been just a little push off there by Stanley Brundy. The quickness inside, the high-low dump down. Brundy with his four-foot range, but eel-like moves around the hoop and the great hands to get the pass. Good pass that time by Howard. Big men in the game now for the Irish. That looks like what used to be South Bend bulk for Notre Dame. Yes, the 6'11 Keith Power, 6'9 Scott Paddock, the ball by three, 22 19. Here's Howard. It will be the Paul ball, but first timeout call, 7 19 remaining. First half. Digger on the Irish, trailing by three. There's no need for you to cry, because I'll be right there for you. Rest assured, because new improved Kodak Ultralife batteries last twice as long as any other battery. You can depend on me. This new old Cutlass Calais International Series reminds me of me. It just won't quit. Fact is, I'm so revved on the new style and features, no way am I coming in. That quad four engine really cooks. My dad and granddad would love it. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. This is the new generation of old. How about the president's on the phone? Heck, try it. Let's make a deal. Choose low financing rate, cash back, or gas credit on any new Olds. See your dealer today. Ma'am, so what do you think of Wendy's new chicken parmesan sandwich? Authentico, la mia ricetta. Mama says it tastes like hers, too much like hers. Chi ha rubato la mia ricetta? No, Mama, nobody stole your no, recipe. No, la mia sorella Antonetta. I wasn't just a sister Antonetta. Well, Try Wendy's delicious new chicken parmesan sandwich. A whole chicken breast filet, real mozzarella, and a rich tomato sauce. It's at Wendy's now, but only for a limited time. She didn't sell your recipe to nobody, Mama. Wendy's new chicken parmesan sandwich. College is a tough climb. Joining the Army could make it easier. You can earn money for your education with the GI Bill and the Army College Fund. And you'll develop the confidence and determination that can get you to the top in college and beyond. The nation's top dragsters burn up the tracks at the Chief Auto Parts NHRA Winter Nationals. Red Hot Hot Rod Action on NBC Sports World. Coming up at halftime, Jimmy Cephalo back at the studio. We'll check out all the scores in college basketball as March Madness has arrived. Check out the rules of the game, and in the Foot Locker Slam Fest final, it'll be NFL speedster Tim Brown of the L.A. Raiders and defending champion and world indoor triple jump record holder Mike Conley. That is the start of the finals in the Slam Fest. I was really disappointed you didn't get to the finals, Marv. You know, you try, and you can you can only do what you can do. Come on, the only thing athletic you've ever done is jump to a conclusion. Ooh, well, and catching up. So awful. <laughs> well, Seton Hall in that Big East semifinal, holding ahead of Syracuse in the second half. At the State in Louisville tied at the 34. At halftime, Seton Hall played so poorly yesterday. Just a Connecticut Seton Hall was just two teams struggling. Seton Hall survived, and Syracuse had to have a heck of a finish to beat uh, Providence. That was a heartbreaker for the Friars. Nice fake by Sweet. Damon Sweet has hit three out of four. The combination of Sweet and Bennett outstanding in this first half. And the ball leads 22-21. We come up on 6.40 to go in this first half for DePaul. An NCAA bid may well be on the line. It appears Notre Dame has it locked up. There's Booth. David Booth with his first bucket. He's a six foot seven, maybe 170 pound freshman who had that 23 point game, a career high against Notre Dame some 10 days back. Boy, his eyes lit up when the Irish win 2-3. He's a converted high school forward, so he still doesn't put the ball on the floor real well. But you give him time with feet together, he'll kill you. Sweet, again. 
he is four out of five for eight points. Bennett is five out of six for 13 points, including two three-point bombs. Murphy from deep. That's a it's 27-23, and the pace has picked up. Blue Demons now going back to man for man. It really is their best defense. Joey Meyer says, we need activity for our athletes. We can't stand around. Whatever it takes to get the flow. Harris Green. And he'll go to the line. A good change of direction by Terrence Green. He never takes a circuitous route. If you just get right to the rim, he'll be there. Watch this. He just slices right through everything and everybody, and he says, you're going to grab me, and I'm going to the line for two. Foul committed by Elmer Bennett, and that is Terrence Green's dad, a part of the senior day ceremonies prior to the start of the game. His father, John, who had not seen him play since Terrence was in high school back in Flint, Michigan. He could post up guards inside. 6'4", senior. They call him T. He's one of those players that, boy, he can go three, four minutes and just throw the ball away and look awful, and he can rip them off. Big chunks. He's hot. The ball by five, 28, 23. Bennett with the crossover dribble. Tower trying to keep it alive. He gets to it. Pittsburgh called for his second foul, so two apiece on Tower, Bennett, Singleton, and Ellis. Lafonso Ellis picked up two early and then departed. When I first saw Tower, I thought that, well, here's another Tim Kempton, but he's a lot more skilled, Mark. He's, uh, he's really going to be a good one. He runs the floor well, skilled, good work habits. This is really quite quite an accomplishment for this young Notre Dame team to already be in the NCAA. This is really like not a rebuilding, a reloading. A different look for the Irish. Five minutes remaining first half. Robinson. And it will be DePaul Ball. Last season, Notre Dame went 20 and 9. They lost David Rivers. Stevenson, who had some difficulties with the law, and then transferred to Duquesne. Luke gets it back out to Murphy. Green with some room. Finding Hamby. And it's the ball by seven. Biggest lead for either team. 30 to 23. The Irish defense has become stymied. They're just standing and looking right now. Those entry passes are coming much too easy. Ball wanted to travel. Jackson on the follow. His first field goal. And Notre Dame trails by five, 30 25. Great example of offensive rebounding. If you're going to be a good offensive rebounder, you can't wait until the ball hits the glass. You've got to be in motion because the guy that shoots it has that sixth sense as to where it's going to come off. Difference here in the first half in contrast to what took place in their last meeting is that the ball is hung in against uh, Notre Dame off the board. Murphy, he is seven for seven. He has 14 points. Everything's down in the paint. The key to this game is rebounding because A, the strength of DePaul is offensive rebounding. They had 20 offensive boards against Marquette. Grundy alone had 10 that he put back in for hoops. Holding foul on DePaul. That is uh, the first picked up by Booth. Booth sitting down. Timeout taken. 3.35 remaining. First half, and DePaul leads by seven. You wouldn't believe the stuff my dad had to do to get his hands on his dream machine. You name it, he'd do it. Here's my dream machine, the new Cutlass Supreme. And all I had to do to get one was go to my old dealer. This is not your father's automobile. Ignition. This is the new generation. Wow. Let's make a deal. Choose low financing rate, cash back, or gas credit on any new old. See your dealer today.
finest team in off-road racing goes nowhere without craftsman tools. From their durable precision power tools to hand tools that are guaranteed forever. So, make sure it's a craftsman, because you don't want to get stuck with anything else. Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man, a powerful friendship torn apart by emotions out of control. Tonight, Miss Elizabeth must choose between them on Saturday night's main event. Well, we discussed a moment ago that uh, DePaul has done well here this first half because uh, they have uh, hung in off the boards against Notre Dame. Notre Dame among the leading rebounding teams in the nation. When you go to sleep against DePaul, they kill you on that offensive board. Joey Meyer was very concerned about the emotion of this building and this team would be flat-footed. Not to be. His team has been up and running and jumping. And when they do that, the Blue Demons in here are tough. And there's the express in motion right now. breaks early in the year, but they didn't have the finisher. Rod Strickland was the finisher, and they've been looking for that guy to make it happen right at the end. Green missing a three-pointer, but a handy is there. Offensive rebounding. Offensive rebounding. Digger's suspenders are stretched. He's hot. He's got two centers in the game, and the Blue Demons are still beating him on the board. Timeout taken. There's the finish. In this building, transition is big trouble for anybody in dark jerseys. Three on one, the Irish caught back. Pretty good defensive play by Jameer Jackson. May have drawn the charge, Digger thought so, and he had some big time players, and in fact has a conversation now. He's yet to talk to his team. He's wondering, what do I have to do to get the charge? All right, later today, NBC's Golf Tour 89 will be at the Bay Hill Club in Orlando, Florida for the Nestle Invitational that will follow the ball and Notre Dame. The Blue Demons on a 9-2 run, and they have extended to their biggest lead, 36-25. to Stanley Brundy, seven for seven from the field. He has 14 points. He's the high man for DePaul. Notre Dame getting it out of its young backcourt. Elmer Bennett with 13 points. Damon Sweet with eight. Here comes LaFonso Ellis, who has not scored, went out early after picking up a second foul. He sat out the last two games because of a dislocated right index uh, finger. Bigger Phelps looking to get some offense uh, back into it. Lafonso Ellis, an outstanding freshman from East St. Louis, Illinois. The Gators of Florida survived the home court advantage in Tennessee with a tournament win. Boy, they had a, a buzzer beater just to get to the semifinal. That's one thing these two independents, Notre Dame and DePaul, miss. The March Madness of Conference Tournaments. It's a little wacky. ADs and, uh, and faculty chairman get sweets, and the guys, the players that really determine things, or two to a room, they can't have room service, and they gotta pay for every call. But they're the ticket to the big dance in the NCAA. Just under three minutes remaining in the first half. And it's the ball by 11. 36 to 25. Singleton is back. Last touch by the ball. Singleton trying to get it to keep Robinson down low. Bigger back with his original starting lineup, and obviously coming out of the timeout, trying to reestablish an inside game. Foul committed by Chucky Murphy, his second to a piece on Murphy and Howard, and it will be a one and one. Postmen for the Irish you have to realize that DePaul is not a good position defensive team. They're not a patient defensive team. They're going to be in there all the time looking for that steal so they can get out and run. And that means you've really got to come to meet the entry pass. Otherwise, it's going to be loose and the demons are gone. Here, Jackson, the best foul shooter on Notre Dame, but not able to click and taken away by Murphy. Here's Price. 
coming back in the second half. Must have been partying last night welcoming Mookie Blaylock back. Well, they had an adventure getting out of the first round as well. Think about these conference tournaments. There's no real pressure now because the good teams are going to the NCAA. Real pressure is when you had to win your own conference tournament just to play a game. That was pressure. Singleton with a beautiful move. Tim Singleton, the sophomore from New Orleans. Beating the Irish down again. And that has been a recurring theme here in this first half. He's eight for eight. He has 16 points. Here's Bennett. Wild shot, but he got it. And the ball leads 38-31 with 23 seconds left in the half. DePaul just beating him down the floor. There were times in years past when Notre Dame didn't have the good foot speed. With this team, they've got excellent speed. It's concentration. You've got to respect DePaul's ability to come out of that net with it running. Even when you score, they're trying to run. Down to 10 seconds in the half. Twice. There's Green. Green getting through. Two seconds left. for the Blue Demons of DePaul as their home finale senior day here at the Rosemont Horizon and a solid first half for DePaul. They lead it by nine. Richard, let's make a deal. You loan me your new Cutlass Supreme and I'll fill her up. Dad Olds gave me a year's supply of gasoline. Uh, Maryland. 50 bucks to use your new Tornado. I got 1500 back from Olds. Oh, Sharon, uh, need help financing your Cutlass Calais? I got 4.9 financing. Sorry. This is not your father's automobile. Hey, kid. Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal on a new generation. Automobile. If you'd like to get the Reebok Revenge, size 15, you can go to Foot Locker or gargantuan greens locker. <clears throat> Foot locker. Where else you gonna go? <laughs> Foot locker carries the largest selection of cross training shoes <laughs> for whatever your routine. <laughs> Foot locker. Where else you gonna go? Today at Ryder, we're putting one of our trucks through its paces. <laughs> This truck was selected at random from our fleet to prove that we maintain the highest performance standards. Standards that ensure a smooth, easy, and comfortable ride. Right? 
Move yourself with right. We make the going easy. If your car pulls to one side, let Midas check your alignment. At Midas, trained professionals with the latest technology align your car right. You see, we're serious about safety. Hey, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. There are some parts of our Burger King Cheeseburger Deluxe McDonald's doesn't want you to notice. Like it's flame broiled and juicy, with crisp lettuce and red ripe tomato. No wonder McDonald's hates the Burger King Cheeseburger Deluxe. No wonder you're gonna love it. Basketball is being brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. And by Foot Locker, America's most complete athletic footwear store. Where else are you going to go? Welcome back to the uh, Rosemont Horizon. Marv Albert, along with Bucky Waters and Joey Meyer, we mentioned right at the start, concerned about too much emotion on the part, particularly of his seniors, Stanley Brundy and Terrence Green, but they have come through. Brundy, the high man with 16, and uh, he has killed the Irish in the first half. And they've taken away the Irish strength. Absolutely, they're going to the boards, and they're dominating the inside game. Lafonso Ellis has been basically rendered uh, neutral in this game. It's been all to Paul. The emotion turned out to be plus, not minus, for the Blue Demons. Ellis uh, got him at early foul trouble, uh, has not played much in the first half, has only a field goal for two, so DePaul uh, looking good at halftime. They lead Notre Dame by nine. We'll be back with more of our halftime after these words from your local station. R is for Rampage. A is for Action. M is for Mayhem. B is for Baboom. And O is for, oh boy, he's back. That's Rambo. He spells excitement. Rambo Sunday. Today's game is being sponsored by the following participating advertiser, Old Style. I got a dream. I got a dream. It comes from the heart of the heartland. I can make my dream, cause I take my dream Right from the heart of the heartland Right from the heart of the heartland as we search Chicago for the perfect new home. It's New Home Showcase, Sundays at 11.30, right here on Channel 5. Welcome back to our NBC studios in New York. I'm Jimmy Cephalo. This is tournament weekend throughout the nation with schools vying for an NCAA bid, but there are exceptions. Case in point, the Big Ten, which does not hold a postseason tournament. That title has already been decided, and the champions, the Hoosiers of Indiana, played like it. Coach Bobby Knight rested three of his top players. Coach Tom Davis and his 15th rank Iowa Hawkeyes looking to end a three-game losing streak. Led by senior Roy Marble, Moses the length of the pass, Marble for the jam. Indiana has already won the Big Ten, so they rested three of their seniors, Todd Jadow, Jay Edwards, and Eric Anderson. The final there, Iowa over Indiana by a score of 87 to 70. And an early candidate for the most unusual sports story of the year. Fans were banned from the ECAC North Atlantic Conference final today because of an outbreak of measles. The Siena wins a trip to the NCAA tournament with a one-point win over Boston University. The New York Board of Health has cleared Siena to play in front of fans during the NCAA tournament. At the SEC tournament uh, semifinal action, Florida advances with a 76-71 win over Tennessee. The Big East semifinals at Madison Square Garden this afternoon, Syracuse and Seton Hall currently. Second half action late, Syracuse leading 76-72. And the ACC North Carolina is trying to advance to tomorrow's final. They're playing Maryland today currently. 68-49, North Carolina on top. At the Metro Conference, semifinals in Columbia, South Carolina, another tight one. Memphis State leading Louisville. 
uh, by a score of 70 to 61. And Oklahoma continues to have its problems in the Big 8 tournament after beating Colorado in double overtime last night. Uh, the Sooners currently are trailing Iowa State by a score of 55 to 53. Again, that game late in the second half. Well, our Slam Fest competition is winding down. Today, the finals. Defending champion Mike Conley takes on Tim Brown for $50,000 in prize money. Here's a modern shot. The prize will not be won by the swiftest or the tallest or even by the franchise. It will be won by the most creative and the most daring. The prize is $50,000, and two of the world's best athletes are ready to claim it. Today, Tim Brown will go against Mike Conley in the final of the Foot Locker Slam Fest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Foot Locker Slam Fest. I'm Ahmad Rashad, along with my partner, the greatest basketball player in the world, Wilt Chamberlain. This is the finals of this competition, $50,000 on the line. That's more money than I made my first year playing basketball. What about your second year? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got Mike Conley, Tim Brown. Who are you picking? I didn't pick Tim Brown all through the pairs. I still don't pick Tim Brown, but there's three chances this time to dunk. That's one more great exhibition, I believe, for Mike Conley. <laughs> all right, we will see. Our panel of judges, NBA greats Earl Monroe, Tiny Archibald, Bobby Jones, John Havlicek, and Oscar Robertson. They've been tough, and I tell you, I don't think you're, you know, there's tens in the dunkers, but are there any tens in the judges? I'm not sure. Well, Tim Brown will be looking for a ten here. Oh, he likes bouncing that ball. That's a, that's a tough dunk. He, he wants to seem to do that, but that's a tough one. I think he feels like, in going against Conley, he's got to pull off one of these fantastic dunks just to stay in competition with Conley. You may have a point there, because uh, this man supersedes them all. Regina, his wife, looking a little bit worried. <laughs> After that, I think everyone's worried right now is Tim Brown. <laughs> the crowd is Waiting looking for a 10. Remember, and so is Conley. I would think that this, this well, you, what do you give this dunk? I, I tell you, look, he goes from one side of the basket to the other side of the basket. The style points are great. He's really up in the air. I give it a 9, 9, or a 10. 9, 9, or a 10. Oh, See what nine, these judges give him. 9, 5 from these guys. I tell you, they're tough. They're getting a little old, some of those guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know. Tim Brown also getting a little old watching Mike Conley work. I can understand that. Oh, now he's going to do a 360 bounce the ball. And I'm telling you, I've never seen that dunk done in the history of dunking. But maybe, you know. It's always the first time, and if it is, I'm sure Brown wants it to be right here. Well, he's going to need something like this in order to pull past that 9.5 of Conley. Mike Conley up for his second attempt. Oh, a wave to the crowd. That's called the family wave dunk. Yes, I tell you, if he had made that, I would have gone home <laughs> without the 50,000. Once again in slow motion. I like the wave. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a showman. The man knows what it's all about. Look at this. And he came very close to making that right there. Double zero for Conley. Mike Conley leads after two attempts. Tomorrow we will have the conclusion. One last chance for Tim Brown. Yeah, with a leprechaun and some green socks. Yeah, I think he might be able to do it. It's all on the line tomorrow. Tim Brown versus Mike Conley in the Foot Locker Slam Fest. Say, where'd you learn to dunk? In finishing school? Oh, now, don't you start telling me I shouldn't dunk. Of course you shouldn't. You don't know how to do it. Dunking's an art. It's all a matter of timing. Well, I'll write a book about it. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. 
We'll rejoin our basketball coverage in just a few moments. But first, here's Dick Enberg with today's installment of Rules of the Game. The Rules of the Game, brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. When is it legal to touch the backboard? We'll find out after this. Your life is changing, and State Farm is there. I'm State Farm Agent Jim McConnell. Terry Saylor's life insurance started out pretty simple. Then there were three children, two new mortgages, a big job promotion for Terry, and for Mrs. Saylor, a life plan of her own. Seven updates in just six years. State Farm agents are there to start you out with life insurance that works for you. And like a good neighbor. And we're there to keep it working for you. Today, let's talk about some plays involving the backboard. When the player touches the backboard, the ball may be involved, it may not be involved. But let's take one case. What if a player, defensive player, goes up to block a shot and with his off hand uses the backboard to help elevate him to block that shot? What is that? That is a technical foul. That's illegal. That's using the backboard as an advantage. How about the situation where the player goes up and slaps the backboard? Oh, we see that all the time. We, see, we hear oohs and ahs from crowd all the time in this situation. If the backboard vibrates and it affects the ball going in the basket, we have a good basket. Score it. But if the ball wasn't on the ring and it had no effect on the shot, play on. And that's today's edition of the Rules of the Game, brought to you at halftime of every NBC college basketball game by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. At the Rosemont Horizon, Chicago, Illinois, halftime, and DePaul leads Notre Dame by the score of 40 31. We'll be back after these messages. Have you heard what's going on tonight? No. More families are watching our family. You can believe that. Than all the rest. I love it. We hate to brag. Well, it's true. But NBC's got the best. Everyone knows that. 227. Amen. The Golden Girls and Empty Nest. The Screamer. So come home to the favorite. Good night. Beers keep pouring in from all over the world, but the best beer still comes from Germany. And the best German beer in America is Bex, the number one imported German beer. Now, the new spirit shows at your Dodge dealer. See our selection of Ram Tough pickups during the Big Dodge Truck Push. Right now, save up to $3,000 on our hardworking full-size pickups. Or get $1,500 cash back on our sport utility vehicle Ram Charger. Remember, save up to $3,000 on our select Ram Tough Dodge trucks in stock. See your Dodge dealer now, where the top new spirit shows. When the University of Illinois needed a voice and data system to take them into the next century, they needed innovative answers. They chose Ameritech, the information company able to link several campuses in several cities, always adapting the latest technology, always anticipating the university's needs. Because when you find a communication system that progressive, the rest is... Hmm. Academic. Ameritech. Solutions that work. Family Feud. The fun is back. Weeknights at 6.30. It is DePaul by 9 over Notre Dame. 40 to 31 as we head to the second half. And what a first half for DePaul senior Stanley Brundy. 8 for 8 from the field. 16 points in all. He's absolutely dominated the paint inside. There was a feed from high post man Howard. Here the Blue Demons are in action. A perfect 8 for 8. And when this guy gets his close, you can book it. The only flaws in the first half for the senior is the fact that he's 0 for 3 from the foul line. Again, another picture. Down inside, inside, inside. The Blue Demons have beaten the Irish at their strength. Front court and on the boards. And the Blue Demons shooting 58% for the first half. Notre Dame not shooting well. They missed their first six shots from the field, Buck, and then came out to hit 19 out of 27. Well, the interesting thing is Frederick is a 
in here, but it isn't the guard play that's hurt Notre Dame. It's been the front court and the board. When Notre Dame doesn't beat you on the board, they're in trouble. That's like their signature. And the ball has been determined to take that away, and they've run well. Additionally, for the year, the ball is like one to one with assists and turnovers. But they're running with such abandon today, and they're so loose that they have nine assists to three turnovers. That's really quite astonishing. This is not a careful ball club. Now they actually loosened up after a, a slow start. Both clubs tied. It's a nine point to ball lead as we head to the second half. We'll be back here at the Rosemont Horizon right after these words. The IBM Personal System 2. Think of it as the engine of a train that links up with your business and moves it forward without leaving behind what you've already got on board, software and hardware. So your business stays on schedule for tomorrow and makes news as it races ahead. The Personal System 2 family of computers. All aboard. When you're thinking ahead, you're thinking IBM. You see those Chevy versus Ford tests, right? We came up with one of our own. Half-ton 4x4s, best available tires, driven at the same identical speed right through this 18-inch deep ditch. Now, this is a real control test, so don't you try it, because you'll damage your truck. That's the Chevy with torsion bar suspension, and that's the Ford with twin traction beam suspension. And you can see why we've had a change of heart and pickups. That's the day Chevy truck. Racing team. The winningest team in off-road racing goes nowhere without craftsman tools. From their durable precision power tools to hand tools that are guaranteed forever. So make sure it's a craftsman, because you don't want to get stuck with anything else. Hall of Famer Arnold Palmer, Fuzzy Zeller, and the field of golfing greats. Tee off at the Nestle Invitational this weekend on NBC. There is the excellent shooting by DePaul. 19 for 33, just a shade under 58%. And Notre Dame, one of the better shooting teams in the country, a 51% coming in, uh, under a shade under the uh, 50. And of course, uh, both DePaul and Notre Dame continue to have their problems at the foul line. Two for ten. Those are problems. 48% on the road with a young team for field goal percentage isn't too shabby for the Irish. The problem is their defense and their boards are broken down so that DePaul is getting anything at once inside. The surprise start of James Hamby. Uh, a good move by Joey Meyer. He was three for five from the floor. Also four rebounds. Six points. A good move. And Elmer Bennett High point man with uh, 15 getting the start. What with the injury suffered by uh, Joe Frederick. And there is Stanley Brundy as a senior, a member of an outstanding Crenshaw High School team that went 30 and 0, winning the city championship in Los Angeles. He has had a superb collegiate career. He's averaging just under 20 for the ball game and a perfect first half from the field. Eight for eight. For 16 points, although 0 for 3 from the foul line. It is DePaul ball. They are in the white uniform as we get underway in the second half. DePaul with that nine-point lead. Notre Dame turning up defensive pressure, trying to get them uh, to not think about that inside game so much. But at least on the first thrust, to no avail. Basket counts and the foul, so the seniors continue for the Blue Demons. Terrence Green with... 11 points and he'll go to the line never in doubt right into the forest all those dark jerseys so strong such a competitor joey meyer will tell you he is our emotional leader always worried about the irish coming back in the first start in the second half the ball starts with a hoop just like he put it on the blackboard and lafonso ellis cannot get himself a game he picked up the foul as third Lafonso, Notre Dame's most highly regarded front court player to be recruited since Kelly Trapuca and Orlando Woolridge back in 1977. But Ellis with three fouls. 
And you consider a freshman is leading this team in scoring and rebounding, and the fact that Diggers had nine first-round NBA draft choices, and none of the others were able to do that, gives you an indication just how good this freshman is. Sponsor remaining on the floor, the purity would be a pull. Keith Robinson draws the foul, so he will go to the line. Hampy collecting his second. Robinson, one of the better free-throw shooters for the Irish at 72%. And Notre Dame opening up with Ellis, Jackson, Robinson, Singleton, and Bennett. Here is Keith Robinson. He has been Notre Dame's unsung hero. Strong candidate for team most valuable player on it. Although he has not been flashy and has had a very quiet afternoon. by 11, 43, 32, some pressure from Notre Dame. Robinson on the point of that press, that's a tough pass over him. The backup man, Lafonso Ellis, came into this game with 49 rejects. That was a, uh, a school record, he passed by Orlando Woolridge. Taker said he's too sweet, he's too nice. Turnover, and here comes Bennett. Threw it away. Brundy picked it off. It's a two-on-one led by Murphy. On the pull-up. Yes. What to do? What to do? Timeout? Now? What? They're running us out of here. This is a tune-up for us. We're going to the NCAA, but what will the humiliation mean to our chances? Bigger said prior to the game that he hopes this crowd is going wild. He hopes Brundy and Green have tremendous games because he would like it to be a strong tune-up for the NCAA. Well, that's what he has got to this point. Well, Louisville knocking off Memphis State. That's the final of the Metro semi-final. What's the adage? Be careful what you wish for. It's most likely to come true. Blue Demons 2-3 on the baseline. They've got to be careful right now for a letdown. Everything has gone their way so much for so long. They can't lose that killer instinct, even with this good crowd. Robinson, and that is his first field goal of the game. 45-34, the ball by 11. And Notre Dame again to the trap, and that drop back as Green gets it across. And try to get too tricky, it's a discontinue. Got away with the behind the back, and then coughed it up. It's always third and short when he gets the ball. At the end of the half, Ellis and Robinson, the two inside postmen, were a combined one for six. That's how much the Blue Demons have dominated the inside game. At the conclusion of today's ball game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. Singleton for Ellis. Sweet. Sweet on the funnel. The move by Damon Sweet has played well. That's his fifth field goal. He has 10, and it's a nine point to Paul Lee. Well, you can believe Notre Dame had some conversation about getting back. That time, DePaul tried to run out of the net. With nothing but Irish jerseys waiting for him. Elvon Foster for Terrence Green from deep. It's a three-point field goal for Green. That's not his strength. That's just another dimension. That just means it's one of those days. shot appeared to come off the palm of his hand. I think his uh, the shooting finger, index finger on his shooting hand did affect that shot. Sat out the last two games with a dislocated right index finger. Foster. Yes. And the ball is on fire. They lead it now. 50. 36.
Look at that hill. I don't have a hill like that. Look at that John Deere tractor. I don't need a tractor like that. I just need a good, basic tractor. You want to see what I got? Introducing the new STX Lawn Tractor, the basic John Deere, with a price that's just as basic. Chevy S10 Blazer, the most powerful V6 engine available in its class, and the most fun available in any class. Sunday, from the hotbed of the game, it's the ACC Championship. College basketball, it's the stuff weekends are made of on NBC Sports. Clobbering Maryland. Maryland coming off that upset over North Carolina State. So in the ACC final tomorrow, starting at 1 o'clock here at NBC, it will be North Carolina against the winner of Duke and Virginia. Dick Enberg and Al McGuire will be there to bring it to you 1 o'clock Eastern time. That's tomorrow. The Blue Demons up to Paul on a roll, leading Notre Dame 50 to 36 with four minutes gone by. The second half, Marv Albert with Bucky Waters from the Rosemont Horizon. That have been 17,000 on hand, a capacity crowd, and then some. It may be the biggest crowd ever here at the Horizon. Nice move from Alfonso Ellis with his second field goal. He's playing with three fouls, and it's a 12-point for Paul Lee. After every timeout, the Irish trying to establish an inside game, going right there inside. The guards have taken most of the shots today for Notre Dame. Unless they haven't been on the free throw line, and it just hasn't helped us. Melvin Foster hitting on his second field goal. He's a sophomore, a hometown man from Chicago, and he has given the Blue Demons a 14-point lead. at Terrence Green was called on the foul. Bucky, you, you look at the front line of Notre Dame. Ellis has struggled. He's two for five. Bobbed by uh, the injured finger. Jameer Jackson only one for six. Keith Robinson not able to get into it. He is one for four thus far. Off the steal. It's a two on one. Green with Price and broken up beautifully. Broken up by Bennett. Terrence Green just careless with the ball. He was getting ready to launch the alley-oop. He saw Brundy coming on the sideline, and he was really embarrassed because the Irish jumped right on it, took it down his throat. There was the alley-oop that never existed. Elmer Bennett really, I think, amazed him with his jumping ability to get up there and reject that. An alley-oop was skyjacked. Too put much time into uh, thinking about these things. Another Notre Dame turnover. Not enough. Green looking for Grundy. Last touch by Notre Dame. DePaul comes in with a record of 19 and 11. They've won nine of the last 11. They come off a victory last Saturday night over Marquette here at the uh, Rosemont Horizon. This is Keith Tower replacing. Keith Robinson, Tower, the 6'11 freshman. Notre Dame at 20 and 7. They have won eight of their last 11, and they come off the win at Marquette. They've won their last two, both on the road at Marquette. But the Foster, he's on a roll. He's hit three out of three. 54, 38, the ball now by 16. He has emerged as the team leader, a very tough kid. Yes, he had a broken nose earlier in the season. Ellis off 
against the mark. Power on the rebound, and the foul is called. Foster had a broken nose, but still hung in. Uh, did not lose much playing time, and he's the type of guy who's always swarming for loose balls, and he continues to dive all over the court despite the broken nose. Foster called on that foul. That, that injury occurred down in the Sugar Bowl, and it was really a bad one. You know, one of those bloody noses that looks a lot worse than it was, even though it was broken. Uh, it really wasn't a serious injury, and uh, he was back in the second half, and they said it would, when they first saw it, it would be at least two weeks out. Bennett from three. Melvin Foster is celebrating his birthday today. He credits Kevin Edwards and Rod Strickland, the fine backcourt last year with his turnaround. Foster's a sport, and he credits those two guys working with him in the spring and summer to really hone his skills as a backcourt player. 6'3", he's really kind of a small foe. He's got those great skills, but he's become a consummate guard and a big part of the DePaul future. Terrence Green sitting down, leads with 15, Jackson, and he was hacked, hit by Price, for Curtis Price, and his first foul. Price is another one of those run the athletes, just guys that just seem to bounce and sprint, and never stop. Coaches say he plays with linebacker type intensity, and he has been compared to in his career. Price is only a freshman. Now that is a rare successful free throw for uh, either club. Notre Dame backcourt notoriously poor free throw shooters. Stats like 68, 60, 68, 66. Actually, the big men are pretty good free throw shooters for the Irish. The problem today is they haven't had an inside game and they haven't gone to the line. Jackson in particular. Good foul shooter, as you saw, 84%. 54 to 40. Paul with the ball. A 14-point lead. Price. Good job by Tower in front of Grundy. I'm not sure what the Irish are in here defensively. Looks like they're extending a matchup. The one good thing for them is they've got the ball standing. Get on there, get on there. Wide tackle six. Here's Murphy. And Singleton starts back. I don't look for DePaul to get into any kind of cute offense. They got to keep going. Three quarter for Jackson. Digger Phelps wanted a foul. He felt Jackson was hit. 54 43. And DePaul now leads by 11. They've left by as many as 16. They better not get set, get soft with this Irish team. They're quick, and they're just young enough not to understand that maybe they shouldn't be able to come back. And in fact, this team on the floor right now is the team that came from 11 down in Pauley Pavilion, which was really an outstanding victory for the young Irish team on the road against UCLA. That team didn't have Joe Frederick either. Traveling violation. Right now, the ball having difficulty getting the ball down low. The Stanley Brundy, Iowa State now by one over Oklahoma. You know, with Billy Tubbs' mentality, he likes to win games like Hitler won Poland, so you know that he's not being cute and saving anything. Timeout has been taken, so we will take a break. In the summer games, a marathoner blamed his disappointing finish on the fit of his shoes. Perhaps he should have started at Foot Locker. Foot Locker, where else you gonna go? The difference between a great athletic shoe store and all the rest is as simple as black and white. Foot Locker, where else you gonna go? I'm Gene Morvig, State Farm Agent. Right now, millions of drivers 50 years of age and over are saving important money with a State Farm discount, just like my policyholders, the Bimas. And now, because Ralph and Nyla are over 50, they're saving important money with a State Farm discount. If you are 50 or over and you want great service and savings too, talk to a State Farm agent now. And like a good neighbor, 
If you want to go places in any career, ask yourself, can I perform under pressure? Can I be counted on to get the job done? You can learn how in the Army, so when you're ready to take off, you'll know you can go far. Ordinary windows versus windowscaping. Windows. Windowscaping. Windows. Windowscaping. See the windowscaping experts only at the Pella Window Store. The nation's top dragsters burn up the tracks at the Chief Auto Parts NHRA Winter Nationals. Red Hot Hot Rod Action on NBC Sports World. DePaul senior co-captain Stanley Brundy went over the 600-point mark earlier in the ball game, becoming only the fourth in DePaul history, joining Mark McGuire, Terry Cummings, Dave Corzine, Stanley Brundy, who has come a long way since struggling as a freshman last year. He shot 66%, second in the nation in field goal percentage. This year at 65%, and you can see why. Almost everything from in close, he has that putback ability. Eight for eight from the field. That will not hurt his statistics. Blue Demons now the one, two, two. But it's kind of passive. They, they lost that edge. They're not quite as tenacious as they were early. Jackson. And call and all that's a foul. No basket. So Jameer Jackson commits his first. But the Paul Demons is really packed in there. There's almost no place to go. It's a pretty decent move except he's too far under. He had to fight a war just to get back out so he could see the rim. 11.50 remaining in the second half, and the ball leading by 11. Booth had it knocked away, but recovered. Even Howard is back to the ball, as is Terrence Green, Green and Foster in the backcourt. Howard up front with Brundy and Booth. Booth has been quiet. Irish and switching man for man now. This leads to mismatches. There's one. Green through the foul. Singleton picks up his third. Terrence Green. Two for three from the free throw line. A 65% free throw shooter. Green has that instinct at 6'4 and 200 and change. As soon as he had Singleton, who's 6'1 and very thin, he took him right to the basket. These are two young teams among DePaul's top eight players. Four are freshmen. And like Notre Dame, DePaul has played a difficult schedule facing seven top 20 teams. They need only one of those from Carolina State. And the Irish with no seniors, five freshmen. I think Joey Meyer is a little concerned about his tenacity right now. Despite the lead, showing some full court pressure. A little light. You know, when you get that big emotional start, Mark, a lot of times that adrenaline will settle down and you have a relapse. And he's trying to get his team jacked up again. They were really humming at the end of the half. Singleton. Tim Singleton with his second field goal. 56-45. Notre Dame down by 11. And again, the pressure and it paid off. Singleton with a steal. Stopped by Green. Here's Jackson. The block by Booth. And it's Green out of the pack. Oh, the speed with the ball of Terrence Green. A four-point turnaround. I mean, Notre Dame had three layups that wouldn't go down. That was the two they lost and then had it run down their throat. And reluctant to shoot. Jackson. And again, DePaul with the break. A three on two. Green out of control. He got to the lane and it just looked like a can you top this? Joey Meyer took his glasses off. Couldn't bear to watch this up close and clear. That was the turnover. The ball had the numbers and threw it away. advantage on a lot of those 
close calls. That's part of being at home. Although Joey Meyer did not agree with uh, that particular call. 16 fouls now on DePaul. Only three for Notre Dame. Singleton to the line, a 68% free throw shooter. Last year, he was David Rivers' backup. He is now the starting point guard in an effective backcourt combination with Joe Frederick. He was out of that the sprained ankle. Bigger Phelps concerned today also with Frederick out because he's been the vocal leader on the floor. He was wondering where the leadership would come from. They actually have gotten good offensive play out of their backcourt. That hasn't been the breakdown. The ball by 11 with nine and a half left of the game. I know Joey Meyer is looking at this group out here and saying they're, they're schmoozing on me. They're, they're, they've lost it. I've got to do something to get him back in gear. You think that's what he's saying to himself? Well, if he was a New York coach, he'd say schmooze, yeah. But they're just, they've lost that tenacity. That's obvious. Oh, gorgeous pull by Jameer Jackson. And the Irish battling back into it. Trailing now, 58-49. I think he needs to go to his defense. I think he needs to go out and chase. Even though the Irish guards are quick and you might be uh, making them better, he's got to do something to help his club. Foster try to get it to Brunty and the rejection by Ellis. The ball continues to have difficulty getting the ball to Stanley Brunty. That's called a, an adjustment at half. Bigger's been around a long time when the guy's eight for eight and all of them are on the blocks, you do something about it. And they have definitely done a good job of sealing off that entry pass. Did it again this time. Robinson kept it away from Howard. Grundy has not attempted a shot in the second half, following the eight for eight in that first half. Now Grundy dribbles to lose his man, make it nine for nine, and an 11 point to Paul Lee. That's as good a half court ball movement as the Paul has shown all day. Good patience, good pass. points for Jameer Jackson, nine of the 11 here in the second half. The steal by Singleton. Joey Meyer wants and needs a timeout. Oh, momentum has put on an Irish jersey. One and two, a 16-point lead. They have come within six with eight minutes left in the second half. back at the Rosemont Horizon in a moment. First, these words from your local station. Tonight on Hunter, a Night Stalker caught in the act. He can do it! Help me! Or is the real killer still on the streets? I think he's got an accomplice. TV's number one cop, Hunter, tonight. There may be banks that hire as many graduates from the nation's top ten business schools as we do. Other company rosters may claim as many alumni from the eight universities of the Ivy League. Some may even match our collection of MBAs from Chicago's two leading programs. But among Chicago business banks, only one can present this report card. The Exchange Banks. We asked Saab 900 turbo drivers to describe their car's performance. Woo! The way it's built. It's comfort, uh, hmm. roominess, and how they feel about their choice. But why ask? The car speaks for itself. Lease a Saab 900 from your Chicagoland Saab dealer for as low as $273 a month. Rambo is back Sunday at 8 on Channel 5. DePaul forwards its biggest lead at 16, being assertive offensively and defensively. Now passive, Tim Singleton, the freshman, strips Chuck Murphy, the freshman. And this is the end result. And definite swing now of momentum to the Irish. And Joey Meyer called timeout to try to put some life back in his club. Digger says, my club's gone. My rookies have overcome the shock of this place. They're back in it. What a run. 
turnovers hurting the ball here in the second half. They've committed nine, several by number 13, Terrence Green. Got a little careless. A couple of forays down court. Another day with only four turnovers. Both clubs shooting well, though, in the second half. And the key is the fact that Notre Dame has closed down Stanley Grundy thus far. Oh, this is half court. This is terminal for the Blue Demons. It's a switching man for man. Really just packed in there, and they always know where Grundy is. Oh, Murphy way off the mark. Here's Ellis. Nice touch. And it is down to a four-point lead. This is where the DePaul seniors, Green and Grundy, have to take over. They've got to restart, jump start at the ball offense one more time. Now Brundy foul. Hit by Keith Robinson, who was again attempting to front Brundy. That's only the first foul committed by Robinson. That is a final score. Oklahoma squeaking by Mookie Blaylock returns Oklahoma in another tough test, but getting by Iowa State, we're told they won it with a three-pointer. That was after double overtime yesterday. I think Tubbs may have something to do with concessions. People around. Terrence Green getting inside, 62-56. The ball by 16. Notre Dame with that 18-4 run to move within four after trailing by as many as 16. We're down to six. Left in the game. The restart of the DePaul offense has got to come from its defense. They haven't gotten any transition baskets for a long time. They've got to get the ball in motion and they've got to do that defensively. Foul called on Jackson. That is the 15th foul on Notre Dame. DePaul has six. And it will be DePaul ball. They are back with Columbia up front along with Hampy and Booth. In the back court, this is Foster handling against Singleton. This is Booth. Hampy outside. Green. Booth wide open. And the rebound to Robinson. Just 10 days ago, Booth had a career high 23 points and seven boards against the Irish in South Bend. He's been a non factor today. Only one out of four did not start. Joey Meyer went with Curtis Price. And David Booth came off the bench. Just under six minutes left in the game. Notre Dame in possession. They're down by six. They have come, though, from the way back. Singleton, Ellis, out of 15 on the shot clock. Sweet. Yes, Damon Sweet is six for ten. He has 12 points, and it's a four-point to Paul Lee. The good ball handling of the Notre Dame guards has just pushed the ball back. The whole defense is packed into the lane. The Irish backcourt doesn't have to be good outside shooters. This year. Foster. 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 The ball by six, 64, 58, with 5.15 left in the game. I think I ticked them off when I called them a non-factor. Nice pass, and Alonso Ellis, who has become a contributor in the second half, converts on his fourth field goal. He has eight points, and again, a four-point DePaul lead. And for the Blue Demons of DePaul, it may well be that the NCAA bid is on the line. Not the case for Notre Dame. They appear to be solid. Both getting way up. I expected more to call pressure. They're just packing that defense in. Wait, came to get alive. Nice pass. And the foul. So Ellis to the line. Brundy called on his second. Alfonso Ellis is a 66% free throw shooter. Everybody talks about Ellis' offensive skills, like he's almost a big guard. He went head-to-head -head against Alonzo Mourning in high school, school All-Star games and did very well with his inside play. It's just that 
his smile and his appearing soft temper. Well, you think, guy, oh, the guy's warm and fuzzy. But as he took the ball to the basket that time and his reject record this freshman year indicates he's a pretty tough cookie in there. points a game. He's done it off the boards. He's done it as a shot blocker. Hits uh, two important free throws. And DePaul by four, 66-62. Foster for Booth. Hamby can handle it. The save taken by Singleton. been many highlights this half for DePaul. This was one. A good deflection there by Jameer Jackson. The ball gets back on the rim. Booth stuffs. And he came alive. That was one of the few bright spots for Joey Meyer this half. His Blue Demons have not done much and they need to get down and create some defensive pressure. They can put asleep in a half court second half. Good free throw shooting by the Irish here in the second half. And for the game now, 9 for 13. And Digger Phelps will take it. Four free throw shooting team. And Damon Sweet has cut it to a two-point lead with 3.53 left in the game. When I say... When I say shark. Copiers. When I when I when I say shark. Computers. Shark. shark. When I say shark, I mean calculators. I mean fax machines. I mean typewriters. I mean business. When I say shark, I mean business. From shark minds come shark products. When I say shark, I mean business. Who says Chevy beats Ford? USAC tested Chevy's Compact S10 with available Vortec V6 against two full-size Fords with standard 6 and available V8. 0 to 60, towing identical trailers, Chevy S10 beat both full-size Fords. That's pickup power. If a compact Chevy S10 with a V6 can out-accelerate a full-size Ford with a V8, imagine what it can do against Ford's little truck. The heartbeat of America, that's the day Chevy truck. Burger King introduces the Cheeseburger Deluxe, our flame-broiled regular cheeseburger all decked out in luscious lettuce and tasteful tomato. The Cheeseburger Deluxe, now at Burger King at a very tempting price. Definitely Deluxe. I'm going to give you two good reasons to look for the Kodak Color Watch seal. Dimples, yes. A great shot of dimples deserves great developing. The Kodak Color Watch system, you're going to thank me for it, and so will your dimples. College basketball is being brought to you by the Heartbeat of America. Today, Chevrolet and by Valvoline Motor Oil. People who know use Valvoline. Marv Albert with Bucky Waters from the Rosemont Horizon in the suburbs of Chicago. The first sellout of the season. Better than 17,000 on hand. Notre Dame. A poor foul shooting team throughout the season has turned it here this afternoon, 9 for 10 in the second half, and uh, that has been the difference. They went on an 18 to 4 run. They were down by as many as 16, and they have now moved within two. It is the Paul Ball with 340 remaining in the game. And there's a reason for that statistic. The Irish coming out of the half did two things. They cut off the inside game of DePaul and created one of their own. They've been going down inside, either with the pass, the drive, and they've created an inside game that just so far this half, DePaul has not handled well. I'm looking for DePaul to press, do something to get out of this stuck-in-the-mud attitude that they seem to have in the half-court game. Foul on Notre Dame. They have one foul to give. DePaul is already a foul of it. And it's a call on Robinson. That is his second. Three apiece on Ellis and Singleton. Brundy and Murphy have three. Timeout situation. Both with two remaining. It's a leg block on Jackson. So Booth will attempt to throw it again. 
It's amazing. It's almost like they were tranquilized at the half, the Blue Demons. Looks like a different team. Well, turnovers also are hurt. Green getting in. offensive move. Terrence Green has been making that one all day long. It wouldn't go down. Stephen Howard recently in the game comes up over the back of Lafonso Ellis gets called for the foul. Howard came into the game for Hamby who had a big first half. Really didn't do much for the ball in the second half. Keith Robinson not able to take advantage of the one and one. The ball maintaining the two point lead as we come up on three minutes left in the game. This is Howard Bounded by Robinson. Howard. And rebounded by Robinson. Not the shot that Joey Maya wanted. Good pressure on Howard that time. He was trying to find Brundy down inside. A combination that really worked well for the two defense in the first half. You let Howard look over your defense down around the baseline. He'll pick it apart. Two and a half left. Singleton gets it back out to Sweet. He's had the hot hand. Sweet being played now by the 6-7 Booth. Here's Sweet, rejected by Booth. Sweet recovers. Robinson. And Booth comes away with it. Howard run into by Robinson. That's three on Robinson. And now Howard is a one and one at both ends. Just a little bit of motion brought this crowd in the game. Just the, just the thought that they had a fast break going. That's how starved they've been. Timeout has been called with 2-12 remaining. We'll be right back. There's a motor oil that talks about world-class protection. Catchy phrase. But Valvoline is recommended by name in the owner's manuals of these world-class cars. The other motor oil is not. Whatever you drive, Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any car manufacturer. Around the world, people who know, use Valvoline. precision power tools to hand tools that are guaranteed forever. So, make sure it's a craftsman, because you don't want to get stuck with anything else. Stephen Howard, a freshman from Dallas, 74% free throw shooter, hitting on the first, so we'll get the second, both clubs in the one and one, three point to Paul Lee. 2-12, remaining in the game. Very smooth-looking stroke by Howard. Yeah, he's a high post center. That's what puts such great pressure on the defense. You've got to play him all the way to the top of the key, and he also passes well underneath. Sweet being played by Booth and having trouble with Booth. Singleton, this is Jackson. Good play by Booth. two seniors on the floor right now and they're both playing for the ball and this is where they're supposed to pick you up and carry you after the great start the ball has just gone cold there's one of them well both got a piece of it green for Brundy the two seniors combined so Brundy is now 10 for 10 Jackson for He's 
taken only two shots here in the second half. He has hit both. He has 20 points, and DePaul leads by 6, 70, 64. Minute and a half left in the game. Notre Dame just did get it in. Singleton off the head fake. Jackson, and he's fouled. Amir Jackson, an 84% free throw shooter, will go to the line. The Notre Dame guards keep slashing in there, and all 10 people are inside the broken circle. There's really no place to go. They've got to pick it up and hit that little J. But it has rewarded them with lots of free throws, which they didn't get in the first game, in the first half. And the 10th turnover is committed by the ball. A major contributor to the turnaround by Notre Dame in the second half. And the irony to that stat, Marv, is that they got those 10 turnovers playing much slower in a half-court game, whereas they only had three in the first half when they were running. Bigger Phelps uh, told me before the game that he, he had some thoughts of bringing Joe Frederick here despite the strained ankle, but he said earlier in his career he made the mistake with Orlando Woolard. Two occasions he forced the issue and he, he brought him along and he played him when he wasn't right physically and it hurt down the road, so he felt leave Frederick at home and have him rest for the NCAA and uh, go with the with the freshman in the backcourt. And they have done well. Notre Dame down, down by four, 70, 66. And the time running down, a minute 10 left in the game. It will be a DePaul ball. Ball kicked out of bounds. The Irish was effective in their really in switching man for man but the clock now dictates they've got to come out and this could turn to Paul up a notch this is the kind of defense they like it makes them play fast off the kicking violation the ball gets the new 45 on the shot clock and a foul on Robinson that is his fourth thanks to our producer today Ken Edmondson director Bucky Guntz the timeout situation crowd here at the Rosemont Horizon 17,651 that is an all-time record and this the ninth year of this building largest crowd ever and the first sellout of the season for the ball Howard continues to hit his free throws three for three and he's done it within the two-minute mark Grundy's the guy they want to foul and he's not likely to get a pass unless it's up over the rim in the square Sixty-six, just under one minute left in the game. Big bucket for Damon Sweet. It is down to a three-point lead. Forty-five seconds left. And Foster able to clear center court. Notre Dame has to be pleased with the way their freshmen have played today. Has to be. They were buried early, fought their way back. Ellis on the foul is fourth. David Booth, the 73% free throw shooter. As you mentioned, Brumby is uh, the poorest the fall foul shooter, 48%. He's 0 for 3 today. They have Howard in there. He's 74%, and uh, he's hit 3 out of 4. Green is only 65. Foster is only 55. He's on the floor. So if DePaul gets benevolent, watch the Irish. They've been down before and come back. There's the high school forward in there. That was no ordinary guard rebound. Booth really went up strong. Big time board when they had to have it. Out of 23 seconds. Foul committed by Lafonso Ellis. So he's fouled out. Leaves with 10. Sweet, who just delivered from there a moment ago, gets iron on this one. On the other side, David Booth, the 6'7 freshman who's really been uh, accorded the perimeter player honors showed why he can also go in there and get the job done with a clutch board ellis out of the game got a uh, charitable hand he gave him a good day another opportunity for notre dame 20 seconds remaining they go for the two robinson and then pressing down a one with 12 seconds 
Digger saving the timeout to stop the clock right here. That's their final timeout. 12 seconds left. We'll be right back. Go ahead, Marcy. It's easy. But, sir, I can't ski. Are they practicing for the Olympic Separatist Slalom? No. MetLife will do almost anything to make sure customer claims are paid promptly. Get Matt. It pays. Digger Phelps mapping it out as Notre Dame will go for the, the quick foul. It remains to be seen how, how cheesy they can be. But with 12 seconds remaining, Paul with a one-point lead, 71-70. Digger knows who he wants to foul. He just doesn't know if they're going to get the ball. Bundy is not going to handle it. You better believe that. And we sweep around uh, the scoreboard. Final flout over Tennessee, 76-71. North Carolina walloping uh, Maryland. Maryland coming off the upset. Went over North Carolina State yesterday. DePaul having trouble getting in. Price couldn't find anyone. They have one timeout remaining now. Well, the rule very clearly says if you get to a four count, you can't give the timeout. And he was dangerously close to eating that ball and giving Notre Dame the ball on the baseline, down one, 12 seconds to go under their offensive basket. I think DePaul needs to give some screens. Out on the floor now, Joey Meyer listening to Terrence Green, who's trying to coach the coach as to how they can get that ball in bounds. But it's not quite that simple. Joey Meyer not only has to get the ball in bounds, he has to get it in the hands of a good free throw shooter, and that's not the easiest thing when your total team is only 63%. Five-point man, Terrence Green, leading to Paul with 21. Stanley Brundy with 20 points. And the AAA most valuable players of the game are Stanley Brundy of DePaul. He hit 10 for 10 for his 20 points. And Damon Sweet, the freshman from Beaumont, came off the bench to hit for 16 points. A major factor in the uh, Irish drive uh, throughout the day, particularly with uh, Joe Frederick uh, sitting it out with that sprained ankle. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and also to assist those in financial need. Again, Price will attempt to throw in. Even though it's after a timeout, it's after a basket, and he can run the baseline. Look for some screens. Booth is going to come to the ball. Good shooter. Howard is going to come to the ball. Good shooter. Notre Dame is going to try to make one steal, and then they're going to foul immediately. Be checking in. They want some uh, height off the possible reception of the uh, the inbounds pass. However, Hamby's a 60% wow. free throw shooter at 15 for 25, but they'd uh, rather get it inbounds and then move the ball down court. Hamby can set a better pick. His size will shoot free boot. There it is. And the foul is called. That'll put Howard on the line. That's uh, the man Joey Meyer wanted to be fouled. Jameer Kennedy picks it up. David Howard, a 74% shooter. He has hit three of four from the line. Yeah, but the element of risk there was Stephen Howard is not a good ball handler, and he got that inbound pass, and in a little bit of panic, he left the floor. Had he not been fouled, he would have walked. The Nestle Invitational following Notre Dame and DePaul, and tomorrow starting at 1. It's 1 o'clock Eastern time, the ACC final. DePaul does have one timeout left. Notre Dame with none. I'm amazed that anybody's on that line for DePaul. One and one. So it is DePaul by two, 72-70. There's some guys on that Irish team that can shoot for three. If he gets this one, it's still tieable. Albert Bennett has hit two. 
from downtown. Notre Dame does not have a timeout. They're down by three. There's the clock running down. They're looking for the three. Here it is. And that will do it. Jamil Jackson, who hit two three-pointers earlier, way off the mark. And that could mean an NCAA bid for the Blue Demons of DePaul. As they have defeated Notre Dame to get a split on the season series at 20 and 11. second half. Stanley Bundy, 10 for 10 from the floor, had 20. Terrence Green with 21 points, 16 for Damon Sweet, 15 for Elmer Bennett. Marv Albert, along with Bucky Waters, saying so long from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. Some men fight for glory, others fight for greed, but tonight the host...